away from me. He's gone. Kaput. I have no space to write, which is my bud. I want to write. I want to write for myself. I want to write for myself, by myself. But I cannot. I must map my story. I must relocate myself. Now that he's not here. So many stories. So many selves. I will invite my other selves to join me. And what we will tell you is fact and it is fiction. Truth and fibs, life and art. To begin, I will tell you my favourite stories. One about a man named Gurr. One about a selfish giant. And one about the gods of Egypt. Isis and her brother Osiris. Who shall tell the stories? And what stories shall we tell? Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, thousands and thousands of years ago, and only yesterday, there was a young woman whose only wish was to understand where she was. She experienced so much sad that she didn't know what to do. But she knew she needed to do something, so she entered a mental map and memories, dreams, and plans. She wrote letters, she invented stories, she acted out myths. And then she waited and hoped it would all work out. These mental maps got her through the day. But sometimes she found it hard to read her map. The map kept changing hundreds and hundreds of years ago. At the edge of the cartographer's map, the area that hadn't been discovered yet, there was a big black hole. Be careful. Because on it they wrote in white. Hic sunt dracones. Do you see them? There are dragons here. I used to love dragons. I loved acting out the dragon myths. Oscar and I would charge the family a penny. We'd sit on the log in the paddock and hear the latest one. The myth of Ur was one of my favourites. My name is Ur, the great dragon king who is not of royal blood. He who is dragon, who is not born dragon. He who gave the dragons back their blade. He breathes fire in the darkness. He who is alive in the lands of the dead. He is a fate he whose power does not need mercy. His story is told in the fires of the land, and that yes, he burn. You shall hear his story. story. You die in the battle of Bathurst. But your way does not decay. After you are cut down, you wake up. In another place. Lying in some driveway. Lined with gum trees. Dead bodies lie about their trunks. And birds tear the flesh. And what animals eat the guts? And walk down traffic to a farmhouse made of brick and mortar. Top the roof, turning and turning, a fountain flies. On the veranda, a dog barks. A man opens the front door. Hello! Come in, take a seat. I've got the kettle on. So I sit and wait for tea. The man brings me a hot cup of tea. And I see his face. It is grey. I am Hades, god of the dead. Don't worry, you're not here to die. You shall live for many years to come. You shall have a long and fruitful life. I am here to show you a secret of life. And after this, you shall live your fruitful life. Look at the picture on the wall. You will enter that picture. You will witness within the painted green the secret of life. Another man enters the room. Hello, I am your David. After you find what you are looking for, I will take you home. I will never go back home. I look at the painting on the wall. It is a very small painting. I have to make myself very small to fit inside that painting. I will wait here. If you do not return in nine days, I will enter into the picture to find you. Do not make me find you. I fly to the painting and land in the middle of the dark meadow. I see three men in funny wigs sitting in the dark meadow. And before them lies a stream of dead souls. And the above between vortexes opening up the sky. One for the arrival of souls, and one for the departures. And below are two holes in the ground opening up the earth. One for the arrival of souls, and one for the departures. And the men in funny wigs send the bad dead souls into the earth. And the good dead souls into the sky. And then many years pass. Slowly, the souls return from the sky, and slowly they return from the earth. Here, in the dark man, the souls they party, they laugh, and they shoot the breeze for seven days. On the end, after they party, and after they laugh, they travel to a new meadow. This one from meadow bright, and here three women stand like stars. They are the daughters of necessity. They are the cases, Clovis, and Antipas. And the case is the first to speak. Oh, <laughs> Dead souls, soon you will return to life. First, you must choose your next life. What you'll be, what you'll do, but not who you will be. Your genius won't be lodged to you. You shall choose your genius. 
genius. When the dead souls heard these words, they rushed to him. All to be first in line. Stop, you idiot! Your life will be given to you. Hey, get in line. The case then skip the souls their new life. Clopas closes them an opportunity. Antipas gives them advice. This is your opportunity. Do not waste time. Before time wastes you. You lost in life. They just took you for real dead soul. But you were alive. You don't need a new wife. I will not let them change my so life. Stop the fear. I can't burn the grave. I'm the end of the dark meadow. The dragon needs you. The dragon of darkness. The dragons of darkness are made of the world. They have four heads. One brings fire. One brings water. One brings air. One brings up. But at the edge of the dark meadow, you see a dragon of darkness. Only three heads. He was a sad dragon with a face of despair and no head to breathe fire. I jump into his back and we fly away. Let the fire hold the dragon tight. <laughs> I say, I will give you my heart of fire. I shall be yours and you shall be mine. I transform into the dragon and my soul spreads throughout its entire being. Together, we travel back to the city of darkness. And I become king on the ninth day of my journey. My day becomes a fire. And I have to watch it! That's not the story! My name is Sir, uh, the great dragon king of the city of darkness, the city of red. I am he who defies the fates. I am he whose power does not need mercy. I am he who is alive in the land of the dead. I am he who cannot be told. He has time to waste, nor has time to lose, nor has time to choose. Trust you to me to avoid the fates. Oh, you're such a little philosopher. So wise and so knowing and so arrogant and so blind. You have five seconds to choose your new destiny. Five, four, three, two, one. I choose the life of the artist. Van Gogh cut off his ears. I swear that'd be a good thing because you're risked it out. Oh. I choose the life of a writer. But Oscar Wilde ended up in Reading Jail. I choose the life of a scientist. And scientists discovered the atomic bomb. I killed millions of people. Stay you have to go now. You are a little shit.
adventure, a fantastical few things, <laughs> where I write the lines of shape and shadow. I will give you my thoughts as they come to me. There, the Milky Way, Theta Centauri, Alpha Centauri, the pointers. See, they point towards the Southern Cross. See how we twinkle? Can you hear that? Can you see? Through their mouth. A mouth full of planets and gods. So much to write about. And all around them darkness swirls. The universe screams. Cover your ears. The new century is born screaming. And so are we. He never came home again. Instead he ran away. And so did I. I'll play I remember flying over the Sydney Harbour. It's time to go home, but I don't want to. I hardly recognize you, Eve. You've got... I know! I got fat! <laughs> I love that bread, not brown there. Our V-dub only just fits your two brown suitcases. My American family have a Cadillac. Oh, oh, that's oh. They've cleaned and polished every inch. It smells like Mr. Sheen. Oh. I made raisin cakes. But they're a bit dry. We sit around the large dining table looking at each other, not sure what to say or do. My American brother is so tall and handsome, you know. Oh, yes. Yes. As Oscar pulls on his second hand coat. Always. My American family are such great cooks. We have Doritos, cream cheese, and soup out of a can every oh, Sunday night. night. I love it. As they serve up cheese toasties. Oh. <laughs> Oscar, why are you doing that? My American family have a cleaning lady to do that. Eve, we used to be so close, you and I. Now I feel like I can't do anything right anymore. You're acting like a little shit. You don't seem to think you belong here anymore. You don't even sound the same. I reach out to my most precious, most selfless brother. I hold him for a long time. My mouth morphs and I am her. At least for now. I'll play Eve and Oscar. Mother. <laughs> it's late afternoon. Their clock was ticking. The pressure was on. Oscar, Eve and their friends had to get to the theatre for a performance at six. They were all performing. So it was all good. I made the soup. I poured the juice. I set the table. Hey, guys, right here. Gotta get going. Oh,
only this morning. A little bird sat upon my shoulder and whispered in my ear. Is this the day you are going to die? Let us have an adventure just in case. <laughs> we walk through the long, uncut grass, past the drive that leads to the dam where the sacred waters flow, where magic happens, according to the Celts. My brother's the first to notice. He's always the first to notice things. Dragon's rat! We begin to follow them until we reach a very large, flat rock covered in etchings of tens of thousands of years ago. Then the tracks disappear. Oh, look! A hole! Don't trip into the tunnel! A dragon's tunnel! Look, <laughs> I can see only the smallest patch of pink at the end of the tunnel. It's so small. Like when you look through your clenched fist. The palest patch of eternity. Come on, hurry up, slow coach! And I close my eyes and leap on the floor! It's dark. So dark. Water drips down onto my head. It's holy libations. You're being anointed by the demons. By the demons! Turn around! Turn around! No! Not yet! Not yet. And the wind screams through the tunnel and we go, ah! Stand here, trying to understand my mental map and the echoes 
Weasley's hop. And that's the end of the story. It's 
great. I'm supposed to be asleep. <coughs> Mum and Dad huddle over the eye king. They want to leave. As I watch, Dad throws three coins six times and slowly builds the hexagram. Success north of the water, says the eye king. Mum and Dad look at each other. Not banana bread in the country. That can't be right. Again, the I Ching talks about success up north. Dad says, well, we've tried for a few years. Another hope. What about Oscar? We can't leave Oscar. So we pack up our house, pile into our white beat up, and head north. And I cry as we drive through the long, uncut grass, past the dam, the sacred water's flow, and the dragon tunnel. Two days of travelling, and a jumbo-sized pack of minties later, we come over the hill of the Pacific Highway just out of town. We see the Brisbane skyline. It's so small compared to Sydney, but pretty. Yes, undoubtedly pretty. The house of wood is large. It feels like ghosts live here, Oscar. Cold seeps through the BJs. I thought that Brisbane was supposed to be hot. Brisbane, the place we love to hate but hate to leave. But that was ten years ago. And I am still here, living in the same place. Your stories are still with me, Oscar. Your stories are still in me. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, and only yesterday, there were three gods, Isis, Osiris, and Seth. Now, as these stories go, Seth is extremely jealous of his brother Osiris because he is the king of the most fertile land, while Seth and his tribe are banished to the desert. So Seth decides to trick his brother first. He invites him to an extravagant party which tables full to the brim. And then he announces a parlor game. Oh, I call it Pass the Box. He produces a Beautiful jewel encrusted cedar box. Whoever can fit inside this box gets to keep it. Everyone wants to play. No, no, you're too fat. You're taking up space. Get No, you're too thin. You're wasting space. Get out. Why don't you try, brother? Dang. But when Osiris gets in. Says slams the box shut, ignoring the cries of his brother. He seals it with lead and throws it into the river Nile. And the Nile runs red with Osiris's blood. Far away, Isis, Osiris's sister, hears her brother's cry. Her fury rocks the earth. Osiris is dead. Brother has murdered brother. Alone, dressed in the rags of mourning, her black shape wanders. Up and down the muddy edge of the riverbed till she finds his coffin. As she cries open the coffin lid, the great wall of time rolls backwards as she begins to spin. And her arms turn into great feathered wings as she soars over the shape of Osiris. The wind on my wings bring breath to your lungs, she cries. And then Osiris awakens. Overjoyed that Osiris lives, Isis leaves him sleeping peacefully, away from crying eyes. But, as these stories go, the wicked Seth is hunting in these very hills, and he finds his beloved brother sleeping. So he cuts off his head, rips off his arms and his legs, and he burns him to ashes! <laughs> and the Nile runs red with Osiris' blood. Isis searches the country for her dead brother. Wherever she finds a piece of him, she builds a glorious temple so that people remember and honour him. As she 
reassembles his body. She uses words of remembrance. And so, Osiris becomes Lord of the Dead. I am and I am not, he says. I know I cannot visit my brother in the land of the dead. Yes, we can.
rituals, like grieving people perform for the people they love, are personal. I would keep Oscar's coats in my wardrobe long after he left this planet to explore other planets, other galaxies. His coats never left the house, though they always smell fresh and clean. I would lay his coats out next to me, and I would wait for him. But then I would make myself very small, and I would crawl inside the coat, and I would hold my memories of him for the longest time.